This is the man who loved ones say gave his own life to save his children. Tonight, family members are remembering 24-year-old Demetrius Johnson Sr. as a father who died a hero. And these are the children he ran back into his burning home to say. They range in age from just 15 months to 8 years old, and tonight one of them is fighting for her own life. Good evening once again. Buffalo's fire commissioner says we may never know what sparked this morning's fire that killed Demetrius Johnson and another man. My colleague Ashley Rowe is live on Humber Avenue, where a neighborhood is in shock tonight. Ashley? Jeff, this fire started just over 12 hours ago, and still, I can tell you, I can smell the charred remains from what's left behind of this house. I want to step outside of this shot so you can see just what is left. If you didn't see this street before, you probably wouldn't even know that a house had been here. All that's left is a pile of wood. This is what we know so far. The fire erupted around 4.30 this morning here at 90 Humber Avenue. We're not far from the ECMC. There were two units in this home, an upper apartment as well as a lower apartment. Two men were on the second floor at the time of the fire, and one of them has died. A family of five lived in the lower apartment. The mother, Tempest Thomas, she made it out, but the father of her three children went back in the house to save them. He did not survive. This is what we've learned so far about the three children. They were all taken to Women and Children's Hospital. The oldest, eight-year-old Treasure Brian, is the most critically injured. She suffered burns over 90% of her body and has now been transferred by jet to Shriners Hospital for children in Cincinnati. Three-year-old Demetrius Johnson is in intensive care tonight, being treated for smoke inhalation, but doctors are saying that he is doing well. And 15-month-old Damaris Johnson was treated and released. I want to bring in my colleague Ed Riley at the moment. You have spoken with family members of these three children. Yes, Ashley, I spent some time with the family this afternoon, and as you can imagine, they are completely devastated. But they tell me they're staying strong and pulling together because two children were hurt in this fire, one of them very severely. He did die as a hero. He did save his family. Larez Collier is grieving the death of her son, 24-year-old Demetrius Johnson Sr., and she's still trying to understand what caused a fire to break out inside this Humber Avenue duplex early this morning. My son and his fiance and children just moved in there maybe about 10, 11 days ago. And this happened. Family members say Johnson acted heroically before losing his own life by making sure the mother of his two boys and her badly burned daughter got out. Face her hair all the way to her feet was burnt. Johnson then went back in to save his three year old son, Demetrius Jr., but Johnson never came back out. He died a hero. Not surprising to you that he would do this? Not surprising at all. He is a real man. You know what I'm saying? He was about his kids, he was about his woman. Firefighters rescued the three year old and he remains in the pediatric intensive care unit at Women and Children's Hospital where he's being treated for smoke inhalation. Another child, one-year-old Damaris Johnson, was treated and released. But eight-year-old Treasure Brian suffered burns over 90% of her body. And this afternoon, arrangements were being made to fly her to Shriners Hospital in Cincinnati. It's just a pleasure to have her around. She make you laugh, smile. She keep you smiling. That's all I can say is she's a funny, she's a funny kid. For this heartbroken family, it is a terrible shock because Demetrius Sr. and his fiance Tempest Thomas had just announced their marriage plans. They was planning on getting married next year in 2017. He just gave her her engagement ring on Valentine's Day. A person living in a second apartment also died here. His name has not, not been released. But there was a lot of stress this afternoon, Ashley, because of insurance regulations. The mother of the burned little girl was not able to fly on the medical flight down to Cincinnati. So we put them in contact with a volunteer group called Wings Flights of Hope. And just a little while ago, we got good news. Owner Joe DeMarco called me and said that they're going to fly the mom down so she can stay at her child's bedside all for free. Oh, silver lining in all of this. Nice to see that they will be reunited soon. You know, just so tragic. This family taking the next step in their lives, moving in here not long ago. The uh, mother just recently engaged. 
ready to take the next step in their life. Thank you very okay. much for this, Ed. You know, we've been here at this scene since early this morning, and our own Desiree Wiley was here live at on 7 Eyewitness News at 5 and 6 a.m. She spoke with a neighbor in a very raw and emotional interview about something that we can all take away from this tragedy. Have a listen. Uh, right now, I'm holding the hand of Cheryl Briggs, uh, the name, one of the neighbors right here at the corner. Um, Cheryl, describe this family. Um, you, you, you knew them. You saw them every day, almost. When I would take my walks, I would walk by and I, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, hi kids. Y'all do this, y'all. You never know. You never know what the Lord has in store for you. Love your neighbor. Just love your neighbor. Say hi, speak to them, do this, do that. You you just have to. You don't never know what's gonna be for you every day. Very simple advice there from Cheryl Briggs, love thy neighbor. Still many unanswered questions tonight about this investigation. What we can tell you is that both the upper and lower apartments in this house were being rented. So where's the owner in all of this? Well, according to court records, the owner of this property is Sayara Udden. He lives in Brooklyn and owns multiple apartments and houses throughout this city. What we can tell you is that there are no housing code violations about this home here on Humber Avenue in city records. We also want to show you a picture. Uh, we tweeted it out just a short time ago. While a demolition crew was knocking down this home, a worker noticed the head of a dog pop out of the rubble. The crew says the dog appeared to be hungry, but otherwise okay. So they took it to McClellan Animal Hospital on Washington Street, where we caught up with them just a short time ago. He just seemed like he was in kind of shock. He didn't know where to go when he got out. So uh, we picked him up and uh, put him in the truck, fed him some donuts. The dog was definitely in the fire. He was in the basement, mm -hmm. uh, which was flooded and couldn't get down there. And until we, uh, my brother tore the house down. And uh, the, the, I mean, the dog, it's amazing that the dog is still alive. Just incredible. The animal hospital will now care for the dog for the time being. At this point, it's still unclear exactly who the dog was living with before the fire. As we mentioned just a few moments ago, the oldest child, eight-year-old Treasure Bryant, is now at Shriners Hospital for Children in Cincinnati for treatment of burns to over 90% of her body. Doctors at Women and Children's Hospital spoke to us just a short time ago about the treatment she will receive there. You're going to hear more about that coming up tonight at 6. You know, there are so many layers to this terrible story. Of course, the tragedy that happened, a family ripped apart, two men lost their their lives. Then there's, of course, the grief, not only from loved ones and from neighbors here in the community, but also from the firefighters who came here, responded to this call, expecting and hoping to get everybody out. They are going to be carrying that with them. But Jeff, I think what sticks with me the most is the story of this three-year-old boy, the son, who carries the same name as his father who just passed today, Demetrius. He's going to be carrying that name with him for the rest of his life, and now he'll also be carrying the honor of his father and the heroic actions that he made to save his family and sacrifice his own life. Jeff? Clearly an emotional day on Buffalo's east side. Ashley, thank you. We have another heartbreaking story this evening surrounding the sudden death of a student at Buffalo State College. Campus police and homicide detectives are trying to figure out if hazing is to blame for the death of 21-year-old Bradley Doyley. 7 Eyewitness News reporter Jill Perkins joins us now with more on this. Jill? Yeah, Bradley was a member of the Buff State men's basketball team. He was originally from Brooklyn, New York, and I just got back from talking with his coach and teammates. The team has a game tonight at the sports arena this afternoon. The head coach spoke to his players about this tragedy. Doyle passed away last night. His coach says the 21-year-old senior business major had been in the hospital, though, for several days. Meantime, college officials say they are aware that Buffalo police are investigating a quote allegation of hazing involving Alpha Phi Alpha and Bradley Doyley at an off campus location. I just learned that Doyley was not a member of the fraternity. His coach and players would not talk about that aspect of the case. Instead, they spoke highly of his character. I consider my players like a son, you know, it's just like losing um, uh, a family member, you know, so 
you know, that's in itself is sad, but you know, I just choose at this point to just relish what he gave us while he was here and to, to keep that with us, those good things and those inspiration and try to enjoy life like I know he, he did. Doyle was currently not a member of the team. He played his freshman, sophomore, and part of his junior year, but clearly is still very much valued as a role model by players. While BPD investigates the campus chapter, well, it's been suspended. There will be a moment of silence before the game tonight. I'll share what his teammates are saying at 6. Jill Perkins, 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Jill. We are also following reports of rising tensions behind the scene in the LaShawn McCoy investigation. Bill's beat reporter Joe Biscalia here to fill us in. Joe? That's right, Jeff. While we still don't know whether or not McCoy will face charges, we do know one thing. This case, before any arrests or charges have been made, has already gotten ugly in Philadelphia. It was yesterday that a report from CSN Philadelphia first brought up tension over the McCoy case between the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office and the Philadelphia Police Department over how long the case has taken. The police has grown increasingly frustrated with the DA's office over how long this case has taken, and both sides went public, very public. I think that he's over overthinking this. I think they're overlooking it. I think they're they're investigating too much. Uh, they need to just move on with it. Uh, if he does not charge the group of uh, individuals that were there tonight, that's an absolute disrespect to Philadelphia police officers. It was an all-out beatdown. It was a sucker punch to the one officer. I was Sean McCoy over a bottle of champagne. This was an aggravated assault. There was serious injury. Eye sockets were broke, fractured skulls. So this just wasn't a pushing and shoving match where you're separated and off you go. I mean, this was this is serious. On too many TV shows, they, they arrest the wrong three people first. Our job is to get it right. And I'm sorry if some people think it's taking us too long. Um, but then again, you know, my job is just to do the right thing. Bye. Williams put out a full press release today on the matter. You can read that on our website as well as any new developments in the LaShawn McCoy case. We're all over it, both on the air and on WKBW.com. Joe Biscalia, 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Joe. Straight ahead tonight, dramatic helicopter crash you have to see to believe. Plus, cameras were rolling when first responders pulled a pair of horses from icy waters. Not only do we have the video, but we're hearing from the brave man behind the life-saving moves. Nick Filipowski live at Riverworks for the ninth annual Labatt Blue Pond Hockey Tournament. We're talking pond hockey next. And all new on 7 Eyewitness News at 5.30, slushy sidewalks are causing all sorts of safety issues in Amherst. But is there a good reason why the town has not plowed a path? I'm out here. I'm standing right on my spot. You didn't take me.
You're watching 7 Eyewitness News with Jeff Russo and Ashley Rowe, 7 First Alert Meteorologist Aaron Mankowski, and Sports with Sean Stepner. Welcome back. A Buffalo man facing drunk driving charges tonight after crashing into a house. It happened just after 3 this morning at Harlem near Seneca. Police say 22-year-old Robert Petrelli lost control while running a curve, struck a power pole, then a house. His car landed on its roof. Petrelli was thrown from that car but was able to speak with police at the hospital. The crash left a hole in a basement wall, but the town building inspector says the house is structurally safe. This Niagara Falls man is in jail, accused of sexually abusing children in the Falls and North Tonawanda. State police say 45-year-old Charles Bass sexually abused three children under the age of 11. He is locked up tonight without bail. The Erie County Sheriff's Narcotics Unit continues its investigation into a drug ring in the city and the suburbs. Raids by the Sheriff's Office on Tyler Street in Buffalo and Sweet Home Road in Amherst put these four men behind bars. Investigators seized money, marijuana, and meth pills in those raids. And it's the video so many people are talking about tonight. A tour heli helicopter in Hawaii crashing into Pearl Harbor. At least three people were hurt here. One listed in critical condition. Five people were on board that helicopter when it went down into the water. People who saw the crash jumped into the water and helped pull the victims to shore. Still not clear what caused that accident. An amazing rescue caught on camera right here in western New York. Watch as three volunteer fire companies race against time to rescue two horses. Horses who fell through ice into a pond. Seven Eyewitness News reporter Rachel Elzefon spoke to one fire chief about the scene and compassion of first responders. These pictures show a dramatic rescue. Two horses had fallen into a freezing cold pond at a house on Clinton Street in Elma. Couldn't look in the eyes of these horses and not just keep plugging along to get them out. At least 30 firefighters came out from Blossom, Elma, and Springbrook Fire Companies. They were getting weaker and weaker, and we could see that th there wasn't much time. The, the breathing was slowing and so forth. So we just swung those axes until we broke a channel through the ice, and then with a little bit of, you know, helping them along with their harnesses, we were able to convince them to come out of the water. This video, taken by an Erie County Sheriff's deputy on the scene, shows the moment one of the horses was rescued. With warming and they started to feed a little bit and some compassion from the owners and, the, and everybody, uh, they calmed down and, and they seemed to be doing well when we left the scene yesterday. Every firefighter on the scene was a volunteer. And they were working to the point of exhaustion. We, we were working guys until they could hardly breathe and we'd switch out, get them rehabbed and, and keep going. And behind the scenes, dispatchers and a vet from the SPCA scrambled to do as much as they could too. It says a lot about Western New York that we can pull that many people together at that time of the day. You know, they drop everything they're doing uh, and come right out to, to help a neighbor. In Elma, Rachel Alzafon 7, Eyewitness News. All right, cloudy skies with strong winds here in western New York right now. We do have a wind advisory in effect for southern Erie and Chautauqua counties running through 9 p.m. tonight. Wind southeasterly 20 to 40 miles per hour, gusting near 50 at times. You can see a wind speed right now of 14 miles per hour in Buffalo, 17 in the falls, close to 30 in Dunkirk. Winds are gusting near 30 for Buffalo and the falls, close to 40 miles per hour in Dunkirk. Winds will be strongest right along that Lake Erie shoreline, gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour at times for places like West Field, Portland, up toward Dunkirk and Silver Creek. As you take a look at our Skywatch 7, the time lapse showing our camera bouncing around quite a bit with the cloud cover across the area and the breezy conditions at the airport. You're going to find a temperature of 43 degrees. Winds out of the southeast right now at 14 miles per hour. Your high today hit 44. Your low today 14. You can see your high temperature today 10 degrees above normal. Sun's going to set at 551. Comes up tomorrow morning a little after 7 a.m. 43 in Buffalo, 44 right now in the fall. Same thing with Dunkirk. 50 in Erie. Still in the 30s, though, for Jamestown, Olean, Bradford, and Wellsville. Overnight tonight, though, those temperatures will start to increase. 7 Super Doppler showing a little bit of light rain out over Lake Ontario. Can't rule out a few showers to develop this evening. As we zoom off to the west, though, notice not a lot of moisture making its way toward western New York. 
Computer model, though, suggesting around 9, 9 15, we're going to see uh, some light rain showers move in. We'll see some scattered showers continue throughout midnight tonight. And then notice by tomorrow morning, skies start to clear out a bit. Don't be surprised if we do see some sunshine on Saturday. So expect a mix of sun and clouds, especially across the southern tier. Rain totals with this next little weak disturbance, not too impressive. You're looking at about a tenth of an inch of rainfall overnight tonight and in the first part of your Saturday. Temperatures right now 43 in Buffalo, but just to the south. 58 in Pittsburgh, 59 in Detroit, 64 in Cincy, and that mild air continues to push toward western New York. So we'll have the warmer temps, and we will have some strong winds. You can see winds tonight uh, starting to become a little more southwesterly and increasing. Buffalo northward gusting near 50 miles per hour, staying strong during the day on Saturday. Notice around lunchtime tomorrow, winds still gusting in that 40 to 50 mile per hour range. And then as we get into late Saturday, the winds will begin to diminish, and noticeably lighter winds as we head into Sunday. Your forecast and for tonight. Strong winds, scattered rain showers, temperatures hovering near 40 degrees. Winds out of the southeast right now becoming more south southwesterly overnight tonight around 25 to 35 miles per hour with higher gusts. Breezy and mild on Saturday. Can't roll out a few showers. Also some sunshine. Temperatures in that 45 to 50 degree range. And then for your Saturday night, some scattered rain and snow showers. Temperatures in the low 30s. By no means a washout this weekend, but you will find a few showers on Saturday. Same thing with Sunday. Monday, a few snow showers. Highs near 30, mid 30s on Tuesday. Partly sunny skies. And you could see some snow roll in for next Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. That's a look at your 7 First Alert 7 day. We'll go back to Jeff now. Thank you very much, Aaron. Still ahead on 7 Eyewitness. This news at 5 on this Friday. Nick Filipowski hits the ice at Riverworks for a look at the Labatt's Pond Hockey Tournament. You're watching 7 Eyewitness News at 5. Testing one at the Propasic 7910.
Hundreds of teams lacing up their skates and competing in the ninth annual Labatt Blue Pond Hockey Tournament over at Buffalo River Works this weekend. The first puck dropped at 1.30, and the game's still going strong tonight. 7 Hour News Sports reporter Nick Filipowski joins us live in the middle of all the action. Nick. Yeah, Jeff, as you mentioned, the action has started and it is only going to heat up late into the night tonight. We are live at Riverworks for the ninth annual Labatt Blue Pond Hockey Tournament. 144 teams, over 1,000 skaters taking to the ice in the hopes of calling themselves Pond Hockey Champions. We are joined now by Gina Hine, the Associate Brand Manager for Labatt Blue. We were talking a little bit earlier. Yes. In 2008, this tournament only had six teams. Fast forward now to 2016. You have 144. This is a nationwide event. 13 states are represented. Folks come from all over the United States specifically for this tournament. How special is it to see how far this tournament has grown? It's awesome. You said it. We Back in 2008, we only had 16 teams. It was a one-day tournament. Fast forward to 2016. We're here. 144 teams, over 1,000 players. We're really excited about the fact that we have three full days of hockey play. Behind us, you'll see the hockey action. We're just starting to heat up, and we're here all weekend long. Now, for the folks who are coming down, family, friends who want to cheer on, their friends who, who are taking on the ice, what kind of activities do you guys have going on throughout the weekend for those guys? Yes, yeah, so we're really fortunate that this year Riverworks is fully open and operational. We have a lot of exciting things for fans. We have an all-new Labatt Blue Zone inside for players and fans to heat up indoors. We're going to have all-new human ice bowling tomorrow afternoon, Sunday afternoon, which is a new activity we're excited to kick off. And we're having, um, we have a local artist here on site painting limited edition Labatt Bat Blue hockey sticks that we're giving away to uh, select players and fans. All right, sounds good, Gina. Well, the tournament action runs through Sunday. Champion is crowned Sunday night, 10 o'clock championship game. Yeah. That's correct. Uh, we'll have all the action for you throughout the weekend. We'll have much more from the ninth annual Labatt Blue Pond Hockey Tournament a little later at 6. Live at Riverworks, Nick Filipowski, 7, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Nick. Looks like a good time as uh, this is Keith Radford joining us now here on this Friday night. Look ahead at what's coming up at 5.30. All right, good. Thanks, Jeff. Coming up at 5.30 and at 6 o'clock, of course, much more on that terrible, deadly fire in Buffalo today. Also, straight ahead tonight, clearing the snowy sidewalks on this stretch of Maple Road in Amherst. It's easier said than done. We'll explain why. And dash cans, are they worth the investment? We'll take a closer look. Don't go away. 7 Eyewitness News continues.
Dangerous snow clogged sidewalks now putting walkers on a dangerous path. So, why is nothing being done? Tonight, we're getting some answers from the town of Amherst. Also, is a dash cam worth your money? Tonight, we're breaking down the pros and cons of these little cameras. And her life was shaped by a towering text. Tonight, the world is remembering Harper Lee. Now, with 7 First Alert Weather, this is 7 Eyewitness News at 5.30. You've probably seen it. Dash cams are growing in popularity, and they've captured some pretty dramatic moments, like videos, well, like you're watching right here, where you see accidents and sporting things happening, all kinds of things. Well, could videos like this land you in the hot seat? And could a video have an impact on your insurance? Tonight, 7 Eyewitness News reporter Hannah Bueller takes a look at what rights you have if you own one of these dash cams. Oh my gosh, look out! Oh, wait, oh my God, hold on. Big wreck, oh my gosh, right in front of me. It's a video that's been viewed more than five million times on YouTube. And you know what? I bought a dash cam the other day and I got it all on camera. Here is the actual dash cam itself. You can see how small it is. That's uh, Tim Linton. He captured that viral video on this dash cam that he bought for just 40 bucks at a local store. He lives in Hamburg, but packs on the miles for his job in sales. It automatically turns on when I turn the key on. Tim loves gadgets and bought the camera just days before witnessing the crash in April last year on the throughway. Of course, catching the next viral video was on his mind, but the main reason he bought it. In case something would happen and somebody accuses you of doing something that you didn't do, then you have a record of it. Video doesn't lie. And that, according to experts like Alex Jang, is why most people buy the cameras to eliminate the he said, she said in the event of a car accident. Jang is founder of BlackBoxMyCar.com. The website launched four years ago to sell high quality dash cams to consumers looking for that video recording device. How popular are the dash cams here in the United States and are you seeing them grow in popularity here? Oh yes, definitely. Uh, it's getting a lot more popular. A lot of people started picking up dash cams just so they can cover themselves. While most of the time you're catching the other driver doing the damage, could that camera and footage you record flip around and get you in trouble with the law? And a lot of people see dash cams one-sided as a positive. But what they're not thinking about is what if I'm the one that's driving recklessly? Or what if I'm the one that's running a red light or driving drunk or rear-ending somebody? And you have this dash cam and the police is called to the scene and they see that you have that dash cam, you're basically documenting your own liability. Altshire says consumers and dash cam users need to know the risks involved in having a video record 24-7. For instance, if you're involved in something and the dash cam captures it and that footage then becomes evidence in a case, you can't tamper with it. If they don't know you have it, they can't ask for it, obviously. But that's uh, dangerous territory there because if you know that the video captured footage of a crime and you destroyed it, then you're tampering with evidence. If the footage is serious enough, you could be subpoenaed for it. At the scene of the accident, I did tell one of the state troopers that I did uh, had recently bought a dash cam and I did have the footage that I would make available to him. It's important to point out that no one was injured in the accident Tim captured on the thruway, but the driver of that black Camaro, 32-year-old Kieran Thapa of Ohio, was found to be drunk while driving and drinking in his car. Is it going to make you think a little bit differently now driving with this device? Oh, absolutely. It's just amazing that you can't, you've got to always be aware of your surroundings and now that it can be used against me uh, that I never thought of, uh, again, just makes you become that much of a better driver. I found dash cams online ranging in price from $15 all the way up to $3,000. Contrary to popular belief, there is no reduction on your car insurance for having a dash cam. In the newsroom, Hannah Bueller, 7 Eyewitness News. 
All new tonight on 7 Eyewitness News at 5.30, these snow-clogged sidewalks creating a downright dangerous situation now in the town of Amherst. We were tipped off, really, by this story, a reoccurring problem on Maple Road out in the town, and we took our concerns right to town authorities. Tonight, 7 Eyewitness News reporter Justin Moore is getting some answers for us. Uh, it's annoying, but it happens. Alicia Walter makes this long walk to work each day, but today is more intense for this Starbucks employee, all because she has to make her way down this snow-covered sidewalk on Maple Road. At one point, I was like, screw it, went on Maple, jumping between driveways. This is typically how the sidewalk should look clean, but we found many of them along Maple Road covered with up to a foot of snow. We did run into a number of equipment failures. They Amherst Town Highway Superintendent blames the lack of plowed sidewalks on broken equipment. Patrick Lucy says Erie County road plows push all kinds of debris, ice and snow onto the sidewalks, causing equipment problems. The equipment that was purchased over five years ago now we're determining that it just it can't handle the job. Just to give you an idea how bad this problem is, take a look. This is what I'll have to walk through just to get over here and catch the bus. One winter, I guess they only had one plow, so it was almost never plowed. The highway superintendent says the town needs new heavy-duty plowing equipment, but it could cost residents a little extra. One of the options may be charging a little bit more to fund our equipment. Town Supervisor Barry Weinstein says there won't be any new equipment purchased this year, but they are working on a plan to get it. In the meantime, highway department officials say they are working with what they got to get sidewalks clean as quickly as possible. In Amherst, Justin Moore, 7 Eyewitness News. Another weekend is upon it, uh, upon us rather, and a lot of that snow that's out there, I'm sure a good amount of it melted today since we're in the mid-40s. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of melting overnight tonight and on Saturday, especially tonight, temps in the 40s. It'll be windy and we'll also have some rainfall, so that th makes things melt even quicker. Keith, let's take a look at the weather computer. I mentioned it was going to be windy. We have a wind advisory to pass along. This for Southern Erie and Chautauqua counties through at 9 p.m. Winds gusting near 50 miles per hour, especially along the Chautauqua Ridge toward Lake Erie. So Dunkirk, Silver Creek, you folks will see the strongest winds as we head into this evening and that advisory in effect through 9 p.m. 7 Super Doppler showing some light rain showers starting to pop up here on our radar screen and expect some light showers to continue off and on throughout the area, especially through around midnight tonight. Futurecast high resolution model showing a little bit of light rain across the area moving through and then around 915 you can see another round of light rain showers expected. These showers continue through around midnight or so. And then after that, you can see some drier air moving in. And notice tomorrow morning, the clouds erode, and we will actually see a fair amount of sunshine at times on Saturday, especially across the southern tier with the mild uh, temps and the sunshine. It's not going to feel half bad for uh, the middle of February there on Saturday. So here's a look at our future cast. You can see the rain across the area overnight tonight, and then it moves out. Notice breaks in the cloud cover during the day on Saturday, especially across the southern tier. Saturday night, clouds thicken back up. You can't rule out a passing rain or snow shower at times. More of the same on Sunday. More cloud cover and cooler temps expected for the second half of the weekend. But looking at temperatures right now, 43 in Buffalo, 58 in Pittsburgh, 59 in Detroit, and that mild air continues to push northward toward us. That's a quick look at uh, what's going on overnight tonight. We'll talk more about the weekend and next week with my seven first alert forecast coming up in just a few. Back to you. Please. All right, good. Thanks, Aaron. Tonight, this suspected drunk driver accused of putting on a one-man stunt show, really. State troopers say that they caught 38-year-old Keith Michaels fishtailing in a fire department parking lot on Route 98 on Wednesday. Investigators say his blood alcohol content was almost twice the legal limit. The Alden resident, Du back in court next month. CSX Railroad is reducing operations in a number of U.S. cities right now, and Kenmore is on the list. And the company says that the move here is to help streamline operations at 16 of its lower volume mechanical facilities, as they call them. About 116 CSX mechanical employees will be impacted here, but right now it's still unclear how many may be involved at the local facility here in western New York. Here's the latest tonight on Democracy 2000. 2016, it is your voice, your vote. With a big win in New Hampshire and then another expected in South Carolina tomorrow, the bullseye is now on Donald Trump.
Some of the big questions here, does he think that George W. Bush should have been impeached? And would he name his sister, who is a federal judge, to the late, or rather to the empty seat now on the Supreme Court? Reporter Jameson Euler is here tonight with this week's PolitiFact Fact Check. Stable person. Really, With his sights really set really on really South Carolina, Republican frontrunner Donald Trump finds himself in the crosshairs of his own party this week. First, in a web ad using a CNN interview in 2008. Well, I think Bush is probably the worst president in the history of the United States. It just seemed like she was going to really look to impeach Bush and get him out of office, which personally I think would have been a wonderful thing. The ad's claims getting lots of talk in South Carolina, an area known as Bush country. At PolitiFact, we do this a lot, and what we find is sometimes those clips are kind of uh, spliced together to make things sound like that they aren't really what they sound like. Uh, but in this case, he said it. Trump has since quieted his impeachment talk, but PolitiFact rating this ad's claim as true. With the passing of Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia, the talk on the campaign trail is who will fill the void. Ted Cruz claiming Donald Trump wouldn't look far, saying Trump would appoint his sister, who is a federal judge in New Jersey. The one person he has suggested that, that would make a good justice is his sister, who is a court of appeals judge, appointed by Bill Clinton. She is a hardcore pro-abortion liberal judge. PolitiFact pointing out Trump spoke highly of his sister in an August I interview, like but just this week saying she would not I, be the I right person for right. Scalia's seat. I hear your he was basically saying she'd be good at it, but I don't think that's going to happen. And he's since named a couple of folks that he would consider for the bench. PolitiFact rating Cruz's nepotism claims as <laughs> mostly false. Meantime, the body of Justice Scalia lies in the very building where he helped shape judicial history today. The justice's casket arrived at the Supreme Court this morning ahead of a private ceremony. The Scalia's funeral is going to be held tomorrow. The justice died last weekend. He was 79 years old. Requests for proposals have now been issued for the new Explore and More Children's Museum along Buffalo's waterfront. The Erie Canal Harbor Development Corporation is looking for a manager now to oversee the design and the construction of this 43,000 square foot building at Canal Side. It's going to be located next to the restored canal system. Those proposals are due by the end of March. Still ahead tonight, Apple picks up some powerful allies in its ongoing battle with the FBI. And who's getting the worst sleep in America? The CDC now ranking the most sleep deprived states. And what do you think of this? line. President Trump. Well, there's a small Canadian island that may be calling you home. We'll explain all this for you when we come back. And all new at six tonight, tragedy strikes in Buffalo. A family devastated after a father is killed rescuing his children. Another man also dead. What doctors have to say tonight about those who survived this inferno. You're watching 7 Eyewitness News at 530.
You're watching 7 Eyewitness News with Keith Radford and 7 First Alert Meteorologist Aaron Minkowski. More than 1 million Walmart employees soon will be getting a raise. Tomorrow, actually, the company says it's going to boost its minimum wage to $10 an hour. That's up from the current $9. Now, the change applies to virtually all of Walmart's hourly workers, including some supervisors. Those people affected make up the majority of the company's 1.4 million employees. The changes don't come cheap either. These pay raises will cost the company an additional one and a half billion billion dollars every year. The battle between the FBI and Apple over its refusal to help investigators break into the iPhone of the San Bernardino shooter. It continues tonight. Facebook and Twitter are both sided with Apple now. Facebook saying that forcing Apple to break into the phone would set a chilling precedent and pledge to fight aggressively against government efforts to weaken the security of consumer tech products. And Twitter's CEO said today he's expressed solidarity with Apple. McDonald's is testing out a, a brand new version now of a southern classic, chicken and waffles. The company is calling this sandwich the Chicken McGriddle. It's a fried chicken patty surrounded by a pair of maple syrupy sweet buns. But if you want to try one of these, you may have to drive down to Ohio. Eleven McDonald's restaurants in central Ohio are testing out the new Chicken McGriddle through the end of March. And it could go national depending on customer feedback. Also tonight, this brand new study that's come out about sleep deprivation. This one shows that more than a third of all adults here in the U.S. do not get enough sleep every night. And there's an especially big problem in one particular state. Reporter Sarah Haynes has details tonight. I can assure you I did not get the recommended amount of sleep. Look at this. So I'm going to need a coffee and some food stat before I can even consider working. A new Center for Disease Control study reveals more than a third of Americans don't get enough sleep and how well you snooze could all depend on where you tuck in at night. According to the survey, the groggiest Americans tend to be in the southeast, but the home to the worst sleepers? Despite the laid-back lifestyle, just 56% of Hawaiians reported getting the recommended seven or more hours of sleep per night. Maybe it's all that fresh Kauai coffee. We're big coffee drinkers. Yes, we had to. very big coffee drinkers. Or who can sleep when there's so much surfing to be done? So you can do stuff from morning till night, and why would you want to sleep? But in South Dakota, you can count on getting all your Z's. It takes the number one spot out napping all 50 states plus D.C. So what's their secret? The fresh air? Something special in the mattresses? In South Dakota, we sleep great because we work hard, we sleep hard, and we sleep on comfort king. Or are South Dakotans just plain tuckered out after a hard day on the plane? The researchers found that being married, having a college degree, or having a job were associated with healthy sleep. So what should you do if a solid seven hours a night seems impossible? Avoid consuming large meals, alcohol, and caffeine before bed. You can even set a pattern going to bed at the same time and getting up at the same time every morning. Also, remember to turn off mobile devices or distracting, light-emitting electronic devices. And if that doesn't work, you can always try counting sheep. We are getting a little bit of a break weather-wise as we head into the weekend. Let's go to Aaron once again, check on that forecast. That's right, Keith. Warmer temperatures and strong winds expected for the weekend. Let's take a look at the weather computer, and you can see a wind advisory posted right now through 9 p.m. tonight for southern Erie and Chautauqua counties. Winds out of the south-southeast, 20 to 40 miles per hour, gusting 45 to 50 miles per hour at times, especially along the Lake Erie shoreline. Winds right now, 14 miles per hour in Buffalo, 17 in the falls, 28 miles per hour in Dunkirk. But look at the wind gusts. You can see 30, 31 miles per hour for Buffalo and the falls. Winds gusting close to 40 there in Dunkirk, and this is where the strongest winds will be. Westfield, Portland, up toward Dunkirk and Silver Creek, back through Evans and Angola. Winds gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour at times. You head a little bit further inland, back toward Stockton, Arkwright, Forestville. You'll see winds gusting 30 to 40 miles per hour at times. Check out the wind gust uh, forecast overnight tonight. Winds staying strong along the Lake Erie shoreline, but then becoming more south-south 
southwesterly, and the strongest winds will be Buffalo northward, with winds possibly gusting near 50 miles per hour overnight here in the metro area and the northern suburbs. We head into Saturday afternoon. You can still see winds gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour across the area, bringing in some warmer air. Then we get into Saturday evening. Winds will diminish, and winds will be noticeably lighter as we head into your Sunday. Looking at our Skywatch 7, you can see the camera bouncing around quite a bit. An overcast day today, and you can see about 70% of Lake Erie is now iced over. Officially at the airport right now, cloudy skies, 43 degrees, winds out of the southeast at 14 miles per hour. Your high today, 44, your low today, 14, your high temp, 10 degrees above normal. You can see the sun just set, comes up tomorrow morning at 7.07. 43 in Buffalo, 44 in the Falls, 44 also in Dunkirk, 50 in Erie, still in the 30s across the southern tier, but that mild air will continue to push into western New York. 7 Super Doppler showing a little bit of light rain starting to pop up across the area. You're going to find some light showers across the area tonight. And then again around 9 o'clock, we have a little burst of light rain coming through. Showers continue off and on throughout midnight tonight. And then notice we get into Saturday morning, skies start to clear out. We'll see a fair amount of sunshine, especially across the southern tier. So you take a look at our sky, uh, skycast here. And I'll stop the map here at midnight. And you can see the rain coming down. Temperatures up near 50 degrees. Look at the winds southwesterly at 35 miles per hour. And then Saturday morning, temps near 40. Winds do come down a bit, but they will still be rather strong during the day on Saturday. Saturday afternoon, you're going to find temps in the mid to upper 40s with that brisk, brisk southwesterly wind around 20 miles per hour, gusting even higher. We get into Sunday, temperatures in the upper 30s, close to 40. Notice the winds out of the southwest around 5 to 15 miles per hour, and you can't rule out maybe a snow shower or two on Sunday. Tonight, strong winds, mild temps for this time of year with those scattered rain showers. Winds southeasterly right now becoming more south southwesterly, 25 to 35 with higher gusts. On Saturday, temps anywhere from 45 to 50 degrees, breezy and mild with a few rain showers, also some sunshine. We head into Saturday nights, scattered rain or snow shower with temps in the low 30s. Seven first alert, seven day. Near 40 on Sunday with the chance for a rain or snow shower. Monday, a few snow showers near 30. Looks nice on Tuesday. Can't rule out uh, well, a storm, which would impact our area for Wednesday, Thursday, and into Friday. We're going to watch that closely. Back to you, Keith. All right, good. Thanks, Aaron. Let's take a look now at what's trending on social media tonight. She wrote the novel that transcended generations. And tonight, the literary world is remembering Harper Lee. The author of To Kill a Mockingbird died earlier today at the age of 80. Despite her contribution to literacy all over the world, Lee only released ever two novels. Her second, Go Set a Watchman, was published only last year. Coming up tonight, a devastating fire takes two lives in Buffalo today, but loved ones say that a father died a hero. All new in seven minutes on 7 Eyewitness News at 6 tonight. The family telling us this was not the first time this man was a hero. Also, if Donald Trump becomes President Trump, there's one Canadian island welcoming you. We'll take you there when we come back. Hello. Well, Ashley has been a very difficult day for this family as they struggle with this tragedy. I wonder if it's on the front seat. Oh, okay. And while they're mourning a man that they call a very dedicated father. Hello, Aaron. They also have to stay strong. I got gotcha. Because there were two children who got who were injured. Okay, in okay. One of them was fighting for her life. One, two, three, four. Good evening. I am Ashley Rowe on Humber Avenue in Buffalo's east side. We are not far from ECMC. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> it's getting chilly. It is getting chilly. One, two, three, four, five. Hello. 
after McCoy, I am outside with a 20 second tease. Okay, so I was just wondering if you needed this. Oh my gosh, I'm so... Mitch's mom was... We have the story tonight of a Canadian island that is beckoning Americans to move there if Donald Trump becomes president. Jeannie Mose has the story now of this website that's encouraging Americans to come to what it calls a Trump-free zone. When Donald Trump deals with protesters... Get him out. He doesn't mean out of the country, but for those who want to voluntarily leave... Hi, Americans. Donald Trump may become the president of your country. If that happens and you decide to get the hell out of there, might I suggest moving to Cape Breton Island? First of all, where is Cape Breton? It's in Nova Scotia, along Canada's eastern coast. Boy, is it beautiful. And nobody has a handgun. Cape Breton radio DJ Rob Calabrese is no Donald Trump fan. His If Trump Wins website started as a joke. Come on up to Cape Breton. Where women can get abortions, Muslim people can roam freely, and the only walls are holding up the roofs of our extremely affordable houses. There are answers to questions like, how do I immigrate to Canada? Though often... They want to know if they can bring their cats to Canada. The website has been flooded with hundreds and hundreds of inquiries. Would you consider moving to Canada if Donald Trump were elected president? I'm thinking Berlin. I would do it in a heartbeat. I would. No. <laughs> I'm an American. I'm going to stay here no matter who's president. I'm moving to Europe if he's elected president. But in Cape Breton, they need people. Absolutely. We have an unsustainable population decline. Housing is a bargain. We saw three bedroom waterside houses selling for 200000 even $25,000. Sure, Rob has gotten some angry emails from Trump supporters. Why would anyone want to move to Canada, especially some isolated, known for nothing place like Cape Breton? Well, it's known for something now. Cape Breton's motto your heart will never leave. Get him to the hell out of here, will you please? Jeannie Mo, CNN. Bye bye. New York. And that's it tonight for 7 Eyewitness News at 5.30. Thanks for joining us. Don't go away. 7 Eyewitness News at 6 begins right now. Now with 7 First Alert Weather, this is 7 Eyewitness News at 6. A Buffalo family is holding on to all that's left tonight. Loved ones say Demetrius Johnson died a hero, saving his children's lives as a devastating fire destroyed their home. He did die as a hero. He did save his family. And only thing I keep hearing in my ear and keep bringing a smile to me is I can hear him saying, Mom, I'm okay. I'm at peace. Good evening, I am Ashley Rowe, live on Humber Avenue in Buffalo's east side, not far from ECMC, with special coverage of a massive fire that has devastated two families and an entire community after a massive fire this morning. I'm going to step out of the shot now where you can see just what is left of this home, just a pile of wood, really. You would hardly know that a home was even here. I can tell you that 12, 14 hours after this fire started, I can still smell the charred remains. It's a potent reminder of just what's happened. And if you'll see, just recently, a few people have been coming by to pay their respects. They have left flowers at the site of this terrible tragedy. And this is what the scene looked like around 4.30 this morning, where two units in this home, an upper apartment and a lower apartment. Authorities say Johnson was able to save his kids, but went back to rescue a 49-year-old man in the upper unit. Neither of them made it out alive. 
And this is what we have learned about the three children. They were all taken to women and children's hospital. The oldest, eight-year-old Treasure Brian, is the most critically injured. She suffered burns over 90% of her body and has now been transferred by jet to Shriners Hospital for Children in Cincinnati. Three-year-old Demetrius Johnson is in intensive care being treated for smoke inhalation. And 15-month-old Damaris Johnson was treated and released. I want to bring in my colleague, Ed Ryan. Riley now, and you've been speaking with family members on this terrible day. Yeah, it's been a very difficult day for the family as they struggle with this tragedy. And while they remember a man they call a very dedicated father, they also have to stay focused because two children were hurt in this fire, and one of them is now fighting for her life. My son and his fiance and children just moved in there maybe about 10, 11 days ago. And this happened. The family of 24 year old Demetrius Johnson Sr. is now looking for answers after a deadly blaze took his life and that of another man living inside this Humber Avenue home early this morning. This is unreal. Johnson is now being remembered for his heroic actions to save his family. First, making sure his one year old son and fiance got out safely, while also getting out his fiance's badly burned eight year old daughter. He was a real man. You know what I'm saying? He was about his kids, he was about his woman. He died a hero. Not surprising to you that he would do this? Not surprising at all. Johnson then ran back into the burning home to get his three year old son, but Johnson never came back out. Even though my son has passed, I have to look towards her and my grandkids to make sure that they are right. Family tells us that Demetrius Johnson did the same thing just two months ago when he came across a burning home in this neighborhood. Thank God the lady was not in there and he got out safely. Firefighters rescued three-year-old Demetrius Johnson Jr. and he remains in the intensive care unit at Women and Children's Hospital. But eight-year-old Treasure Brian was flown to Shriners Hospital in Cincinnati because her injuries are so severe. And in the meantime, the American Red Cross is providing assistance while relatives have now established a GoFundMe account to help the family pay for expenses. Having a difficult time and it's a lot to take in in the course of a day. The cause of the fire remains under investigation and the name of the second person who died here has not been released. But there is kind of a great story on this about the city of good neighbors. You know, the mom of this little girl who was burned was so stressed out today because insurance regulations would not let her fly on the medical flight mm -hmm. to Cincinnati. But an organization that we know as Wings Flights of Hope stepped up and Joey DeMarco, the owner, said that he's going to make sure she gets down there so she can be with her daughter tonight as she recovers. Oh, coming together in a time of tragedy. Absolutely. Thank you very okay. much, Ed. Well, as Ed mentioned, investigators have not yet released the name of the other man who died, and we are withholding his name because of that. What we can tell you is that he is 49 years old. And just a short time ago, uh, two men who say they worked with him at an auto body shop on Buffalo's west side stopped by the scene to pay their respects. They actually also dropped off some flowers. They shared their thoughts of their coworker with us. It's sad. It's sad. He was a good man. You know, he liked to help people and um, and uh, was a great person. You know, he had problems in the past, but he, you know, made that up, you know, you know, and uh, he was he was trying real hard. And we we please, you know, and and and, and you know, when we be you know happy, he was a real good friend. Yes. Um, we're going to miss him a lot. We've been hearing from friends, from family, and also from the local community who are as well feeling a great sense of loss tonight. You never know. You never know what the Lord has in store for you. Love your neighbor. Just love your neighbor. When I opened the door, I grabbed the little girl because I thought it was set on her. Until I turned my hallway light on and realized her face, her hair, all the way to her feet was burnt. Her skin was off her, her feet. Oh my gosh, it's hard to explain. You just heard her speaking about that little eight-year-old girl who has burns all over her body. We understand that she is stable and doing relatively well, but she's got a long road to recovery ahead of her. The director of trauma at Women and Children's say, says that they had to move her to a specified care center in Cincinnati because the burns were just simply too serious. We 
are a level one pediatric trauma center and we do care of all the critically injured children in this region of Western New York, including burns. When the burns get to uh, extreme severity such as this, they go to a highly specialized center and our partner in that care is the Shriner Center in Cincinnati. Well, back here at the scene, a demolition crew got quite the surprise this afternoon. As they were clearing away some of the debris, they noticed that the head of the dog pop out of the rubble. We caught up with those workers at the McClellan Animal Hospital downtown where they took the dog afterward. The dog was definitely in the fire. He was in the basement, mm -hmm. uh, which was flooded and couldn't get down there. And until we, uh, my brother tore the house down and... Uh, I mean, the dog, it's amazing that the dog is still alive. But all will now care for the dog for the time being. Now, there are, of course, still a lot of unanswered questions at this hour, and the investigation will continue through the fire marshal. For now, tonight, we wanted to focus on the families, the victims of this tragedy. Uh, just uh, as a recap, in the lower apartment, a family of five, the mother ran out with her daughter. The father ran back inside to save the others that were inside the home. He did not make it out alive. He and his fiance, they just got engaged not long ago, and we're hearing from neighbors that they only moved into this home just a short time ago. And in the upstairs apartment, uh, a 49-year-old man and another person living in that area of the home. We'll send it over to you, Keith. All right, Ashley, thanks very much for uh, updating all of the elements on this uh, terrible story today. Now we have another